Welcome back, Team Joanna, to our fifth installment of Q&A Tuesdays. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, um, we are, are in the process of building out some things for you guys, some, some really cool stuff. Um, and so if you'd like to sort of stay in the loop as things develop, we uh, have a mailing list, which you can find at Higher Consciousness Academy. Dot com. We would love for you to sign up. And then um, there's a little survey after it, uh, just some quick questions about, you know, what you guys are interested in. So we would also really appreciate if you would fill that out as well. Joanna. Hello, everybody. Hello, Wendy. Oh, I and forgot for the, to introduce myself. I'm sorry, but I forgot to say my a, name. It, <laughs> yeah, it's Wendy. Wendy. It's <laughs> Wendy. It's our beautiful Wendy who takes care of all those wonderful things for me in the background and keeps me on my toes. I need that. Um, if you are listening to this on a YouTube channel, one way or the way to get your question uh, answered is to join our private Facebook page and uh, go to our little section where we have Ask Joanna, Ask Questions of Joanna, or however it's written. And that is how you can get your question answered. If, again, if you are listening to on YouTube, um, if you post a question in the comments on YouTube, I will not address it because those specifically have to go through the private Facebook page. And if you're not a member yet, we have a lot of fabulous uh, things that come with it. The link is right down below for you. So we hope to see you there. And if you are already there, Thank you so much for being part of our team. So yes, so I should probably also say um, for the specific you know, questions, if you would like to um, um, ask a specific question in the Facebook page, if you go to the announcement section, uh, you can scroll through and find the Q&A for Joanna thread and post your question there. So, um, we're going to start with kind of a, a general question before we get into the, the specifics um, that, that people are, are wanting to know about. Well, this is one that a lot of people have been asking about. So do you have any thoughts around um, the COVID virus? Like, do you have a sense when it will end, what the effect will be on our world as we knew it? Like, what should be, people be doing during this time? Do you have thoughts around that? Um, so here's what I received when this virus, I refuse to call it by name. <laughs> okay. No, no. Uh, because I, I think it's also because YouTube is, is, is also screening for this word. So oh. I, just, I just don't want to give it attention. And I, yeah. So, right. um, but when it all just came out to light, which was a beginning, uh, end of February, beginning of March. And I remember this was as it was yesterday. I remember I was at the gym where the gym was still open and I was on a treadmill and all of a sudden I got this, what I call it a download. I had a vision and I had all this information flooding to me. And basically what came to me is that uh, there was no mention of how it happened, who's responsible that, because that to me, I couldn't care less. It's not that I don't care, but that is other people deal with that. Let them tackle that let them fight over who's right who's wrong who's who's uh, you know who's made it happen it's happening the bigger picture is i was told that this will fundamentally reset our economy i didn't at that time i didn't know what it meant because I, we didn't know the severity of it but three months later you can look at what's happening in the world yeah. so that is what i received the other thing that i received reset that it would reset the economy the other thing that i received was that over time, and I feel like um, let me see how I want to say this, because I'm really focusing on not predicting. Because I, I don't, I as Joanna don't. Prediction is not my thing. I love getting stuff, but the moment I look for predictions, it's like I'm out. My head gets in the way. My, it's. I'm an open channel, so I let spirit tell me or beings tell me what I need to know. The moment I think I need to know something, then I know I'm lost. <laughs> mm -hmm. My ego is too much in the way. Um, not only that, there's so much controversy around this. I, I, I don't want, I, I never wanted to be someone who channeled information that would be controversial or that would be into conspiracy theories because it's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't fulfill me. It's not my thing. It's not my thing. My thing is focusing on helping a person realize their power 
That is my focus. That is my drug of choice. That is my drug of choice. So if Trump is going to be elected or non-elected, even though my personal side, Joanna, has a whole bunch of uh, views on that, I don't get information on it because it's, there's too much muck connected to it. It's not my thing. Mm -hmm. Although I will tell you, um, a couple of months ago, I was sitting in a meditation and this was so random. I remember I received a message on the current president of the United States. And I have my own thoughts on it. I'll keep it to myself. But what I received was really interesting. And what I received was that this particular person, just like we all are, is a being and he's fulfilling a certain, certain, um, certain purpose in a bigger scheme of things. And his role is to, um, it's to, it's, it, somehow it's to help collapse old old structures mm, mm, okay and not to get to, into politics too much but if you think about it whether you are pro or against there's been some interesting things going with this president anyway that's that's all i'm going to say about the president that's enough for me as far as <laughs> as far as um politics getting back to this virus the other thing i was shown is that this is going to fundamentally down the road shift our perception in terms of what we consider as value. And I was shown that the value of money, what we perceive as valuable, will be lowered and the value of human life, but not just human life, life in general will go higher. So it looked like it was almost like a, like a shift, 180 shift of what we consider valuable. And when I saw that, I thought, huh, that's really interesting. And I was given an example. The example was that some time down the road, and I can already see this happening. This is already happening. Uh, what I saw is that we are going to come together more as communities and we will create more community-like settings. Not everybody, of course, but there seems to be a draw towards creating more communities, self-sustaining communities. Mm -hmm. And they showed me, and this was, an, uh, this was a metaphor, they showed me one person had a whole bunch of apples, another person had a whole bunch of toasters. The person who wanted a toast, who wanted an apple, exchanged it with the toaster from the other person. So there was an exchange. So I think down the road, at some point, we will, perhaps maybe even in our lifetime, we will experience life where we will attain what we need by way of exchange, but not just necessarily with money. Hmm. And that kind of made sense to me. It actually sounded pretty good. Interesting. So that is what I feel is going to, that is, that is what I, how I feel this is going to affect but I feel it's, 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 this is not short term. This is going to keep on going because I don't feel this is not a one-time thing. I feel, this, I feel this was meant to create a certain level of chaos in order to allow for things to collapse because when things collapse, reset is possible. As a matter of fact, when things collapse, you have to start over. This okay? is true. And if we are faced with rebuilding anything, think about it this way. If a hurricane goes, uh, you know, um, ramages, um, you know, a whole bunch of neighborhoods and then the houses have to be rebuilt, generally speaking, you don't rebuild it to exactly the way it was. Oh, no. no. Because when, if you are rebuilding it, you're going to upgrade. Right. That's kind of sort of what I'm getting. Now, we know that reset is not comfortable. Well, let's just look what's happening. It's not, yeah. right? Yeah. Not, um, I mentioned this before. Um, if it wasn't for this, I wouldn't take up running. And I am now addicted to running. <laughs> so <laughs> I, have, I have two addictions. And I realized when I was running one day that when I'm in nature, my heart is fully open and expanded. And I thought, ah, oh, that makes perfect sense. Because nature 
nature doesn't fight. Nature is always, it always strives for perfect balance. In its nature abides by laws of nature. It doesn't fight. Nature doesn't fight nature. We do. We tend to. Mm -hmm. So when you're out in the open, at least when I'm out in the open, I was actually shown my heart is fully open. I'm connecting with the trees. And I never thought about it that way. What it also does, it grounds my energy. Yeah. So the higher I vibrate, the more I need to go outside. And literally, I need to run in order to ground this high frequency. Otherwise, I would be whoa, really high. <laughs> so I don't know if that answers the question. I think it answers some, but that is what I see. And I, to me, to me, it is a positive. Now, I would be ignorant and arrogant if I said that there are no negatives. Of course, all you have to do is look at people how are affected. Not only those lives that have been lost, but those whose jobs have been lost and businesses have been lost. I mean, this shit is real. Mm -hmm. yeah. Real. What I was also shown is that rarely is significant change made unless something really uncomfortable is happening mm. yeah because oftentimes we look away right right so regardless of how this happened i mean we can go into speculations at the end of the day guess what until we're alive we're not gonna know until we're dead we're never really gonna know uh but since it's happening anyway i feel we can take this as an opportunity to better ourselves look what's happening we are becoming closer communities by the very virtue of we have to be stuck at home. Mm, yeah. At the beginning, everybody was running around buying toilets. Now, toilet paper. Now you see people helping somebody, helping a neighbor, being, you can see it. You can see it. Of course, not everybody, but in general, I feel it's happening. Yes, I agree. Now, here's the trick. If we can only continue with that, I feel life is going to be so much better. But if we forget and go back to our old ways, then it's a loss. Universe is interesting that way because universe will always present us with, with opportunities to shift and change. I do, I truly, truly do believe that. I truly do believe that. I would just hate to see the enormity of this situation go to waste where people in general don't do anything with it long term in, ter in terms of making a positive difference in their life. I was listening to somebody earlier today and he, he, he quoted a number that kind of made me sad because he said, this is what's going to happen. 20% of people will take this and they will make a fundamental change and 80% of people will go back to their norm. Yeah. And I thought that was pretty sad. It is I really hope, sad. I hope, I hope, I hope he's... I really, I, I respect him, but I hope he's wrong. And if I said that, I, I would hope I would be wrong too. Right. Because I think we have an opportunity here to, uh, let's not let all these lives be gone for nothing. These people, and I, under, I understand not everyone who believes this, and I always say, do not believe a word I say. I do, do not believe a word I say. If what I say rings true with you, by all means. But just because I say it doesn't mean it's the gospel. No, and I don't want that. I want you to think for yourself. I want you to feel for yourself. I want you to question. I want you to look deeper. All I'm doing is I'm presenting information. What you do with that information is entirely up to you. Right? right. I was going to say something, but I forgot. Anyway. Well, I'm going to interject something here. Just because we talked some politics for a very short time is not an open invitation in the comments for people to continue that conversation. No, and just to make it just to make it clear, the reason why I personally, as Joanna, and I've had I've had been asked this before, the reason why I don't is several. It is for my own protection. Okay, if I want to remain doing this work, I want to make sure that I stay open to people. Okay. If I peg myself in the corner, then I'm no longer available to as many people as I can help. So that's first and right. foremost, right? If I'm too much out there in a, you know, in a la la land, uh, many people will, mainstream stream people will not take it seriously. So I will lose the opportunity to help them. 
I'm not saying, by the way, that you guys need help and you need me. God, God, God. No, no, seriously. That's not what I'm saying. But I want to, op I want to have the doors open versus closed and getting into politics and things like that. Number, no, that's number one. Number two, what it does is when I focus on it, you know what it does for me personally? It makes me focus on the, uh, on the distortion of what we are experiencing because it makes me focus, uh, focus on them versus me. Right. And right. I my focus is on bringing more unity. So that's why I don't do it. I'm not saying it's not happening. I'm not oblivious to it. It's just not my, it's not my flavor. It's not my flavor. Yeah. And the moment somebody asks me for it, uh, it's like um, my heart just, it's like my heart, like um, as a muscle, it, 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 um, it constricts. Right, right. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can ask me all you want. It's just not gonna be answered. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna move on. Um, so, Last time we were talking about um, connecting with universal energy and, and sort of around that, um, there's sort of an extension to that conversation that I'd like to, to continue here. Um, so some people are feeling like they're blocked in connecting with their guides or in channeling or connecting more deeply with higher beings, mm -hmm. um, connecting you know, with the energies around them. How would you suggest removing the blocks? And, and tell me, if this is the same conversation as we had last time, then we will just direct people back to the last uh, Q&A. I don't think it is, or if it is, I think it's going to be answered a little bit differently. So let me just tune into the frequency here. See, the fr when, you were t when you were asking me the question, the first thing I got was, to maybe perhaps first look and ask, what is the block? What's the block? Identify the block, right? People will naturally say, well, I don't know. Well, here's the problem. You cannot work with something unless you know what it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Just tell me, Joanna, just tell so, me. <laughs> but here's the thing, if I tell you, if I tell you, it still doesn't make it you. Right. It still doesn't make it yours. I will point you in a direction and I will ask you to look. And upon looking, you'll go, oh, and then I will say, there it is. And then I will say, yeah, that's it. But I didn't tell you. You found it out for yourself. And the moment you found out for yourself, guess what happens? You now have awareness. You have shifted your awareness. Your eyes became open. Now you know what the problem is. <gasps> And when you now know what the problem is, you can start looking for solutions. So perhaps one of the blocks is, I don't believe. Okay, well, that's very valid. Okay, let's talk about it. What do you believe? If you do not believe that you are connected, what do you believe? Because we, this is what we've talked in the last uh, session. Whether you believe that you're connected to energy or not, you are, it's just by nature. You can't be anywhere other than connected. So that's a given. Now we have to look at personal beliefs. So perhaps, and everybody will have a different block, right? What I often try to do, it's, uh, as much as I can, when I'm having a session with somebody, and this is not healing, but regular session with somebody, I will direct them at acknowledging the block within themselves, and the block is usually um, experienced as a feeling. And I have a technique, many techniques actually, where I will work with a person and I will direct them to their bodies and the specific, specific placement in their bodies when they're holding the energy. And I will ask them to tune into that energy. And I will have them relate with that energy. Okay? You can think of blockage as shadow. You can think of it that way. I love working with shadow self. Shadow self is fears, whatever we don't want to see, whatever we're afraid of. You know what a shadow is, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So what happens is when you tune into your shadow and you shed light on shadow, what happens when you shed light on shadow? Uh, it becomes illuminated. It doesn't like it. <laughs> well, for what? It's no it's longer not a shadow. In the, it's not in the dark anymore, right? It's no longer a shadow. That's correct. That's what awareness is. That's what awareness is. The moment you see something, you go, oh! all of a sudden, it's like the door has opened. And now you have an opportunity to do something with this. You don't have to, but now you know what it is. 
And then we, depending on what it is, we proceed further with various different things. Um, it's, it's hard for me to put like a blank statement on, on how to remove a blockage because uh, again, everyone will have, will have a different individual blockage, but I feel so what I'm hearing is stuck, stuck. And I hear this a lot lately. And um, there's two ways I wanna tackle this. The stuckness we feel right now is part of us shifting and changing. Because what I see is energetically, we're not sure exactly where we're going. There's clearly a lot of sh 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 shift taking place. <laughs> <laughs> the other one too, shift taking place. Many of us, of us are not where we once were, but we also know we're not where we think we're supposed to be. In other words, we're somewhere in between. That's called transition. So the stuckness is often um, a symptom of what we're going through right now. So if I take it on an energetic level, we are moving from low density or lower density to higher density, mm -hmm. right? As we move through lower density to higher density, we naturally drop dead weight. Dead weight is anything that's lower frequency, fears, insecurities, you know, you know what those are, right? right. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's a process we have to go through and it's a process that, process that takes a while. And the stuckness is not knowing where we fit. And sometimes, and I feel this is the case a lot right now, Sometimes the feeling of being stuck is just something you need to be okay with. Acceptance. Acceptance. That word comes up all the time because it's part of our journey. It's, it's almost like if you're a spirit right now, you're thinking, oh, so this is like not knowing who I am. That's an experience. That's an experience. I remember speaking of not knowing who we are or if we are stuck, we are stuck or if we literally, we don't know who we are. And I hear that a lot lately. Oh, that's predominantly my sessions. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where mm -hmm. I'm going. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm like, perfect. That's exactly why we're meeting so that I can direct you. Not because, not because I'm going to tell you where to go. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. I'm going to show you where to look within you so that you can find your own direction. Everything is always about you. When you're working with me, everything is about you. But anyway, where was I going with this? <laughs> I seem to do that a lot. I was going somewhere with this. Oh, man. Oh, mm. maybe it'll come back to me. But I think that kind of answered the question, I think. So, yes, yeah, acceptance. Yeah, be okay with being stuck. It is temporary. Nothing, nothing, nothing ever in universe stays the same forever. It doesn't exist. And I feel the more we, the more we, what's the word please? Um, the more we resist yeah. the feeling of stuckness, the more we become stuck for longer. Yeah. It's like, be okay with, not being okay for the moment. And that shifts your energy. It elevates oh, your vibration. Absolutely. Because what it does, it's like, oh, finally she accepted it. Boom, now we can keep going. And I see this so much. And, that's, and obviously I've seen it in myself. I mean, after all, I am a human and I am my own experiment first so that I can understand things on myself first. <laughs> Otherwise I can't help you if I don't understand it, right? Yeah. So everything I'm experiencing is for the sole benefit of helping a client, you know, and I do it voluntarily. <laughs> I do it. I love it. I do it voluntarily. Um, so acceptance is a big word. Um, obviously there's various, uh, okay. Meditation, um, quieting the mind as much as we can, uh, focusing on breathing, focusing on doing something fun, focusing on doing something that will help us get through the day while we feel stuck, but we don't keep focusing on the stuckness mm. and that's difficult because it's like if you're hungry the last thing you want to think about is how thirsty you are you're freaking hungry <laughs> right. so it's hard not to focus on it right mm -hmm. um you know exercise yoga um 
obviously I'm not talking about how to get through this stuckness because that every, every person will have their own timeline. And you, I mean, there's literally gazillion ways to deal with stuckness, but at the end of the day, it is where we are right now. We are in transitions and many of us are, are in, in, in the in-between stage, including myself as Joanna and as what I do uh, for, with work with this. Right. Like even late, even the last, last, last week, when I tune in, I get so much information on frequency and sound and the power of words and the structure of words on an energetic level. This is stuff that I've never used to get, right? And I know, I don't know what to do with it now, but I do know, I know though that eventually it's going to make a cohesive sense to me and I'll be able to present it in a way that makes sense to you. Right. And that's partly what's happening with the information that we will be putting in our courses and our programs what's happening right now. I'm literally being downloaded with it right now. Hmm. Yeah. That's Does that kind awesome. of help? Does yeah. that help with the question? I think so. Yeah. And, and, and I'll share, you know, for myself, um, cause I've been going on a journey, uh, for sure. And, you know, not there, but, um, certainly in a, in a really cool place. Um, when I get up in the morning, the first thing I do is, um, listen to an, a, a meditation um, and that always like just maybe it wasn't this way in the beginning but I put a smile on my face yes and then I sit up and I just playfully like ask my you know ask spirit like what you know what message do you have for me today and I have this deck of cards that's um, postcards from spirit so I pull out the deck and I shuffle it and then, you know, I go through and sometimes one flies out. Um, and, and almost all the time, it's so interesting. Um, the card that's flying out was directly related to the meditation I just got done doing. Oh. And, and I'm like, okay, like just seriously, just whack me over the head with it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's really kind of, it's really super cool. And, uh, <laughs> and, and then that puts another smile on my face and, um, and I just, just last night, uh, wrote out, um, on three by five cards. Um, today is going to be the best day ever. And I posted it on our mirror in our bathroom and then posted one downstairs on, um, my wife's, uh, extra monitor. Um, and I believe it. Okay. So maybe in the beginning, you know, when I was, lots of, you know, sort of mantras that I kind of surround myself with during the day, I would say like in the beginning, I probably didn't believe them, but I keep telling myself them. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, and so every time I see, you know, the note, today is going to be the best day ever. It just refocuses my, it elevates my vibration. And so for me, I need like those visual cues and I have to start my day off with, with meditating. I just have to. And then put a smile on my face. Here's how I start my day. And I, I think I got this from Oprah last year and I thought, oh, maybe a couple of years ago. And I thought, wow, that's a great idea. Uh, basically, she said that she, she wakes up every single time morning that she wakes up in the morning. The first thing she does is she's grateful for her day mm. and for her life. And I've been doing that every single day since probably a year or year and a half. I don't care how shitty I'm feeling. I am grateful for what I have because there could be a whole lot more that I may not have. This is true. And I always say this because there's always going somebody that says, I don't have anything to be grateful for. If you have not, if you don't have one thing to be grateful for, we have a freaking problem here. And that is, it's not that you don't have anything to be grateful for is you are not seeing it. Seeing it yeah. You're not seeing it. What I wrote as you were talking, because the stuckness came back and I wrote, stuckness helps reflect on what we desire more of. So being, because when we're in motion, we're not really contemplating on what we will. We're just busy doing. We're busy. We're busy. We're busy being busy. But this process of stuckness forces or allows us or both to reflect. We often focus on and reflect, oh my God, I'm stuck. Oh my God. But how about if we reflect of, okay, I am stuck, but what would I, if, if, if I could, and you can, 
make a difference and have a different life, what would I enjoy more of? I know I can hear somebody says money. (laughs) (laughs) And I just heard money is not the problem. Money is not the problem because money is everywhere. And I know I'm going to have people saying, what are you talking about? You're crazy. Oh my God. There's enough money for everybody as much as you could possibly want. Of course. Absolutely. It's all what you believe. And we will talk about this in a future episode. I promise you guys. Yeah. Because this is fascinating. Again, how much you believe. So what you said something very interesting. You said in the beginning, when you saw the message, you know, today I'm going to have a best day, you didn't believe it. And I was going to say to you, why not? Well, why this particular it- message, no, but other messages that I have written around my desk were, were really more, I was more resistant to this one. I absolutely, I know it's going to, I know it every day. But what I'm saying is we are so much more, um, we're so much, what's the word I want to use, please? We're, it's so easy for us to, to, to not believe than believe. And it's like, think about it. Why is that? It's a thought. It's a thought process. Why is it so easy for us to not believe? Why? Because it's trained. Mm-hmm. It's a trained thought. Because thought can go either way. Our thought naturally is trained to go in a certain direction, right? And so when we don't believe, it's because naturally we're inclined not to, for whatever reason. But that doesn't mean it cannot happen. Our thought, thought is energy. Thought is pure light, is frequency, it's energy. What directs the thought is intention. Most of the time we're not aware of our intention. Intention is what molds a thought into action. Without intention, there is, there's, there's, it's like if you, if someone doesn't have, if we don't have it, we, if we do not have an intention, it's like being in the middle of an ocean and you're saying to me, come on, let's go. And I'm going, well, okay, you got to pick, you got to pick, where do you want to go first? Otherwise you're just sitting still. So how about if we are stuck, we pick something that we would like to work towards get the mind going, have an intention. So for those of us who are feeling stuck, let's have an intention. Intention could be anything. It could be as simple as my intention for the next week is to find more ways to feel joy. Let that be your intention. And then you know what? You better start looking for it. Intention is like opening a door. Right? It's like, let's say you're going on holidays and you're packing and you've got a map and everything is ready. And you're like, okay, Joanna, let's go. And I'm like, we can't go. Why not? Because you didn't pick a destination yet. <laughs> and if you have no destination, how will you go about getting there? You can't make the first step the for the process. We have, no, we have no control over the outcome. We only have control over the process that eventually leads to an outcome. Right. And an outcome may not be exactly as we envisioned, but an outcome that is based on energy and frequency in terms of a feeling or an emotion, that's what we're always going into. A person who wants lots of money, that's not what they want. And I know people will argue. No, but if you really think about it, it's not the money you want. You have, a th- you have a connection to money. Money means something to you. So when you want a lot of money, it's that something you want. It's not the paper. Right. You want to feel stable, perhaps. You want to feel abundant, perhaps. There's, do you want to feel secure? Money is just a, 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 it's a, well, right now, especially because we don't really deal with money, it's an illusion. It's, a, it's, it's, it's nothing. It's a make-believe. Right. Right? And think about it. We make serious decisions based on these make believe thoughts. Yeah. This is true. Fascinating. To me, it's fascinating. One of the things that I want to do is, and and I really want to do this, I have not done it in uh, years, maybe a decade ago was the last time I did this put together a vision board um, or a dream board or. Uh, you know, to kind of get connected with those things. Um, And somebody I was listening to today was talking about um, uh, write, um, 
your like ideal perfect life like a day in the life of your ideal perfect life you know what is it how does it start um at, at, you know from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed and um and then read it every day take you know the first start of every day 10 minutes to read it and but not just read like the words on the paper right you've got to read it with feeling like yeah. this is and i don't know it's just a just powerful i just it's so much so much we can talk about but we're unfortunately at the end think of about our it. time again yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to throw something in think about it the feeling is what makes it real yes and yeah. what you focus on what is real to you is just a matter of fact before it shows up in front of you yeah. in whatever form and I that's why i put a smile on my face every morning that's right because what you're doing is you are training your muscle when you when you smile naturally just chemically you release certain chemicals just by however many muscles have to move in order for you to smile it creates a chemical reaction in your brain yep try getting fighting with somebody with a smile on your face you know that you can't do it <laughs> right so what you're doing is you're training yourself to do this and before you know it it'll be something you don't ever have to think about anymore because it's going to be part of you naturally Yep. That's, that's how you rewire your system. Yeah. Yeah. It takes diligence. It takes practice. It takes patience. And it is not, absolutely not an overnight process. No. And, and I, I feel like I need to stress this. And I, 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 people know this. I know they do. But sometimes it's like, oh, I want to change. I want to change. Well, change happens when you begin to change. It doesn't just happen. Right. Right. And even if something just quote unquote happens, it's not just happening. It's happening as a result of some energy that has been working in the, in the process of working behind the scenes. Right? Yeah. Anyway, I think your wife is behind there talking to you. I hear her. Oh, you hear her? And I have yes. noise canceling headphones on. Ah. She's actually outside. <laughs> I could, unless it's TV, I can like literally clear as day. Oh my gosh. You have a good mic then. That's a good thing. No, that's, these are neat yeah. noise canceling. Ugh. But yeah, but the mic, okay. your mic, right? Wait, so I just, I just changed my, oh darn it. It's cool. It's okay. <laughs> I was trying to turn the noise canceling up. Um, so anyway, well, that's, that's distressing. Anyway, so. This was we, excellent. Yeah, we were at the end of our time here. And so thank you. Very thank much. you yeah, thank you guys fun. yeah so we'll see you all yeah. guys next time yeah please Thanks do comment yeah comment what you like comment what you got out of it comment if you had an aha moment or if you didn't or if you thought it was crazy it's all good <laughs> um i we all love reading your comments and getting engaged that way so yeah thanks a lot yeah for sure we'll see you next time bye bye